Hello, hello there everyone. Welcome to this tutorial. Today, we're gonna be making something very simple, but very effective as well. It is a snow generator procedural. We're gonna be making the geometry node setup together, right? So I hope you learned something from that as well. It is very easy, so I guess it's gonna be a very nice startup tutorial in how to use geometry nodes for something like this. You can also download the final geometry node setup from my Gumroad which is free as well. I hope you still follow this tutorial. It is a very informative one with some neat tips and tricks you can use for your own geometry nodes as well. So let's dive into that. Right, in Blender, we're going to start off with a little bit of sad stuff. We're gonna delete the cube. Delete, bye. All right, let's shift A and let's add the Suzanne, right? Suzanne is nice and it also means Blender. Let's add a subdivision surface of two and let's just apply that and shade this smooth. We want some starting geometry, right? The procedural generator is going to work with the geometry that's already there. Um, so, well, it is up to you how high poly you want your snow to be as well. It's going to follow your mesh. If you have a low poly mesh, then your snow is also going to be low poly, basically, right? So we are going to start off with this. This is a nice geometry. And we're going to swipe this window to the left and head over to the Geometry Node Editor. Hit New. We create a new Geometry Node Setup. And we're just going to name both of these names Snow Gen. Snow Gen. There we go. Now, to start this off, we need some mesh that we can turn into snow. Right? And we want this based on our original mesh. So we're going to work with our initial geometry and we're going to separate a part of it for the snow. To do this, we need a node. We're going to swipe this out, drag that line, and we're going to search for a separate geometry there. And we want a specific part of the geometry to be split. And this selection is going to be based on our weight paint. Right? So we can paint on our geometry and those places will basically be snow. That will be amazing. So to do that, we're just going to connect this empty dot to the selection. And we're going to toggle this little button. Now we can actually enter an attribute there, which means we can enter a weight group. So let's first just create a weight group. Let's go to the object data properties, hit the plus sign, and let's call this snow map. All right, and then let's head over to the weight paints in the left window. And let's just draw some snowy places right where do we want that snow to be here i'm also going to draw some on those eye sockets there beautiful let's just blur it out a little bit there amazing beautiful beautiful right that's gonna be snow so in our modifier for the geometry nodes we are now going to left click there and select the snow map nice that's all we need now the separate geometry is already at that selection. So hit Shift A. I'm gonna search for an extrude, extrude mesh, and then place it alongside that. I just collect the selected to the mesh, and now we need a Shift A a join geometry. Swap it in between. There we go. Connect that there. Now we can just uncheck individual, and it will all extrude it at the same mesh. There we go, just drag that down to decrease the um, the thickness there. Looking a great, well, not so much because we have that blocky geometry. The reason why is because it uses the geometry of our Suzanne. So it uses those squared faces. It will depend on your faces. So the more detailed your mesh is, the more smooth you can make it as well. But we can also smoothen this a little bit in geometry nodes. All right, to do that, we are going to drag this all to the right. We want to smoothen it before the extrusion. So we're going to hit Shift A and we're going to search for a set position node. And a set position node is something we use when we want to move a specific part of the mesh. We want to move specific vertices or we just want to move, um, we move the mesh, right? We can now just move the entire thing. All right, so we want this position to be based on let's say an average of two points all right that's usually how you smooth and stuff is if you have two two points in space if you want to smoothen that out you want a middle position you can take those positions the vectors and you can basically take the middle way which means we need to add those vectors and then just half it right just 
half the skill. So we can just hit Shift A and search for an edge vertices node that gives us information of two positions. Shift A vector math. There we go. Connect this into the first one and this into the second. And then hit Shift A vector math one more time. There we go. And set this one on scale. And then just add that there. And set the scale to 0.5. Right? That's basically going to take half of the added vectors, which is going to be the mean. So connect this there. And that's already smoothening it, but not that much yet. So what I'm going to do is just repeat the pattern. I'm going to select this node, Shift D, and just connect that after about five times. There we go. And I'm just going to connect the same scale vector into all of those positions. So you can see on the left that it's going to scale it over and over until it looks smoother. All right. So that is better. So it goes from this. Um, to pretty much this, right? It's a lot smoother. Now there's only one issue, and that is that it moves the initial positions of those faces a little bit more into the mesh because it's trying to smoothen that as well. So we just need to set that back to the original surface. So how we do we do that? Well, we just need another set position node. All right, drag that before the extrude mesh and the position, drag that out. We want that to be based on that geometry proximity. And we want the target to be, directly to the left, the original Suzanne mesh. There we go. Now it's now it's nicely based on that mesh again. Beautiful. All right, now there is something else I want. And that's a little bit of randomness. It's what I always do when it comes to nature stuff, organic stuff. It's never perfect. It's never very smooth. So we're going to add a little bit of bumps with a noise texture. Very easy. Right. And to randomize that, we have a very nice option in the extrude mesh nodes. We have offset scale and we can control this factor with a noise texture. Right. So drag that out. And set that to noise texture. That is beautiful. Now shift A and search for a math node and drag that in between. Set that to multiply and off we go. Just drag this down a little bit. There we go. And now we can control the skill. It's not very visible because we don't have a lot of geometry. So what we can do is shift A and search for a subdivide mesh and just drag that in front of there. So we have a little bit more geometry that we can actually work with. All right. So that is nice. We can now change the skill and we get a lot more bumps there and just play around with that. That's looking more organic already, isn't it? All right, that is looking nice and all, but how do we actually smoothen this a little bit more? Because I don't like those hard edges on the top. Okay, so what we're going to do, we already have smoothened stuff, right? So what we can do is just make that a group. For example, if we want that, we can select them all. And then we can right mouse and we can actually just make this a group. Control G. Right, so if we now go out of this group again, exit group, we actually have one group, one node that we can work with, and it doesn't take as much space as we had before. Right, and we can now just control C, control V, and that will just duplicate. Shift D works as well, <laughs> depends on what you like more. We can just connect this in between there now, and we just need the position, and that is going to be the same scale vector. Right, so drag that in there. And it's going to make it nice and smooth again. Now, there's only one issue. And that is the... Um, what is it called? The the bottom of the mesh is also being smoothened, right? The sides. And that is a little bit annoying. Because it moves the entire mesh up. And it is no longer connected to the Suzanne. Alright, how do we fix this? Well, quite easy, actually. All we need is to go into this group, right, edit it, or just right mouse and edit. We need another input, and it's going to be a selection, and it's going to be connected to all of those nodes. All right, there we go, there we go, and there we go. Beautiful. Now we can just right mouse and exit this. There we go. Now we have another input. And that is what we are going to use to control what is going to be smoothened. 
and what we want to be smoothened is just the top part of the extrusion not the bottoms not the sides so we can just connect this top into the selection and off we go it is now nicely smoothening the top right this edge is no longer that hard and it's actually looking quite decent all right nice now you can just shift d this if you want more smoothening um just try it out how many you need how many you want it is completely up to you how smooth you want your mesh right so it's also smoothening out our noise a little bit so we can just make that a bit stronger again right stronger and maybe up the scale a little bit as well on the top face we don't want it to be too much anyway because snow bumpiness on a flat surface isn't really that bumpy so this is fine something like this it's looking quite nice and then we can just play around tweak the settings and we can actually add some of these variables into the geometry node so we can control it from the modifier tab now how do you do this well it is very very easy so let's see what we want to control the first thing is, I guess, the thickness of that snow, right? So that's basically going to be this value. Well, not completely. This is going to be the strength of that noise texture. So this is going to be the strength. Shift A and search for a group input. I'm just going to drag that there. And we're going to connect this one to that value. Let's go to the group panel there. And let's name that noise strength. All right. If we want to control the overall strength of the um, of the noise or oh, sorry of the extrusion the extrusion depth we can just hit shift a add a math node in between set to add right and just reduce that a little bit and connect that value to the inputs as well and just change that name to snow thickness beautiful right so now we can connect that here as well and just play around with that quite nicely all right now we also want that noise scale of course noise scale so we can play around with that scale as well looking nice yes sir and if you think this is going to be too smooth you can just go into your geometry nodes here and just select one of them and hit ctrl x or maybe two or maybe three and that will just make it a little bit more rough again but i like the smooth look so i'm going to keep it at that all right then is there anything else we need to do well of course we need materials all right so how do we do that how do we add materials to the right spots pretty much well it is easy we can go to rendered view let's go to cycles for now yeah let's do it gpu and let's just add a quick HDRI. You can download them from hdrihaven.com completely for free. Environment texture there at the color. I'm going to locate on HDR I have. And I'm just going to go with Whipple Creek. It's one of my favorites. I'm not sure why I like it a lot. And I'm just going to go to my renderers tab and just go to film and hit transparent there. Beautiful. And now I'm just going to search for a material for my Suzanne, my OG Suzanne. And I do this with Blender Kit. You can download that from blenderkit.com. It's an amazing website, amazing add-on as well. It has a lot of free materials, free brushes, free objects. Um, and it also has some paid ones. But it is amazing to use for, for example, some basic materials. So we can, for example, go to the Material tab, hit the little I button. And if you have downloaded, by the way, you can go to edit in Blender, preferences, add-ons, and just install the zip file there. And you just tick it, the checkbox in front of it, and then it will be working. And then you can look, for example, for rock. All right. And let's see. We can, for example, I'm looking for a little bit of a stylized one. I like stylized stuff. Stylized rock. Should be something. I like that one. Let's connect that. And let's go to the shader editor and just tweak the scale a little bit. Make this a little bit bigger. Something like that. Looking quite nice. Okay. And then for the snow, we want a different material. So let's go to the material tab. 
hit plus and then we're gonna search for snow let's go um procedural snow looks nice actually let's select that and connect it now it's not going to be visible just yet what we need to do is go back to the geometry node editor that's the wrong one there and then hit home if you can find it shift a and search for a set material there and then just swipe that in between there just in front of the joint geometry and we're just going to set this to procedural snow isn't that nice Right, so let's go to the shader editor of procedural snow, hit home, and I'm going to decrease the height a little bit on that displacement. It was a little bit too strong for my liking. Something like that is nice. Um, I like having a little bit of displacement because it adds a little bit of roundness there, so that's actually perfect. And then we can go to the snow generator and just reduce the snow thickness a little bit if we like that. And then just add a little bit more noise strength to get more of that initial bumpiness back. Alright, so you can tweak all of this pretty much very, very custom. Noise, a little bit there. Beautiful. Alright, so that is already pretty much it. There's just a few things more that I need to enlighten you on. And that is, first of all, how do you now tweak this weight map? And you can just select Suzanne, go to weight paint, and now you can just start tweaking this. I'm going to go to my object view, and we can now just draw, add new weights. All right, for example, on those ears right there. New stuff. Now, there's a few things that can go wrong here. By default, your brush is going to be set on mix. And that means, well, it's going to be adding snow parts nonetheless but whenever you want to remove stuff you set it as zero it's not going to work properly right it's going to take a lot of time so what we want to do if we want to remove stuff is just set the bridge from myth brush from mix to subtract and then you can paint it in well we have to set the weight to one and then we can just paint this in um, and it will subtract it way better right so we can create some holes and spots and you can also set this to add all right, add and subtract both work very nicely. And then we can just add some more snow on the ears, for example, on the eye sockets as well, if you want some snow there, on the nose as well. It all depends on where you want your snow to be. All right, I want the nose, not the eyes. That's looking quite nice. All right, let's go to rendered view, see how that looks. Nice, we got snow on the ears, we got snow on the head, snow on the nose, looking all pretty and stuff. And yeah, you can basically change all of those other settings yourself based on how you want them to be. I'm going to add one more procedural, well not procedural, but one variable we can change and that's this material. So I'm going to connect the material to this group output as well. There we go. So we now can change the material in the geometry node settings as well. And I think that's pretty much it. I want this subdivision there as well so we can add some more geometry if we want. I'm going to name this materials fine and this snow resolution. There we go. And then we can just increase the resolution if we want more of that bumpiness from the noise modifier. All right. That is looking uh, nice. And then we can just decrease the scale, for example, and we just get some more bumpiness there. Isn't that nice? Right. So that has been this tutorial. Remember, you can just download this as well if you'd like. Um, you can also follow along, you can learn a lot from these geometry notes. And well, if you liked it, please leave a like, a comment, or subscribe. Um, I will be incredibly happy with any one of those, and I will continue making new videos, new geometry notes setups for you guys. So if you're interested in that, do follow it. And yeah, thank you so much, have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one.